Hi, I'm Miki, and this is everything I read in 2021. I read 52 books this year, a lot of which were manga and graphic novels, so I did read a good number of novels as well. So I'll be going through everything I read this year, giving a short review of any of the books that I like or recommend, so let's get started. In January, I started off the year with Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. This is his most famous work, and though it wasn't my favorite of his, it was still a great read. If you want to get into classics, I would recommend his books because of his minimalist writing style and dark humor. Next I read We Should All Be Feminists by Chimamandi Ngozi Adichie, and this was an adaptation of an essay the author gave in 2012 in a TED talk. The next couple of books I read for an English class that I took in the spring, which was about autobiographical graphic novels. The first one was Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud, which is a sort of overview of the history and the art that is comics. This was made in the 90s and mostly focuses on Western comics, so it is in need of an update, but it is still a good read. Next, I read Mouse Volumes 1 and 2 by Art Spiegelman. I have the complete edition here, and if I had one graphic novel, that I had to recommend. It would definitely be this. This is the best graphic novel that I've ever read and is also really influential in western comics. In February I read Beloved by Toni Morrison and this was one of my favorite books of the year. I think Morrison's writing is so captivating in this one so I highly recommend it. Next, I read The End by Lemony Snicket, which is the last book in a series of unfortunate events. This is a childhood favorite of mine and I reread this series every couple of years or so, so this was just me finishing up my reread. This month I also read Palestine by Joe Sacco. This was a very dense non-fiction graphic novel work and not something I would usually read, but I do appreciate the history and insight that I got when reading it. I finished off the month by reading a four volume manga series called Our Dreams at Dusk by Yuki Kamatani. This manga is a story about a group of LGBTQ people living in Japan who meet together in a safe place called The Lounge where they can just be themselves and form friendships with one another. This is the best representation of queer people that I've seen in manga. The author is non-binary and being non-binary myself it makes me happy to see these genuine stories being put out there. I really like this manga series and I hope you get the chance to check it out as well. In March, I read a bunch of graphic novels, which I'll just list off quickly here. Persepolis by Marjane Satrapi, which is another classic graphic novel that I recommend. 100 Demons by Linda Berry. Um, I didn't really vibe with the art style with this one, so didn't quite enjoy it. Are You Listening by Tilly Walden. I love some of this author's other works, but this one didn't really hit the mark for me. If you want to read something by this author, I highly recommend On a Sunbeam, which is also free to read online as a webcomic. American Born Chinese by Jean Luen Yang. This was a reread for me. I first read this in 2015. I reread this for my graphic novel class and it still holds up as a great graphic novel. The last graphic novel for this month is the Sky is Blue with a Single Cloud. This is a collection of short stories by female manga artist Kuniko Surita. It was made in the 60s and 70s and I really wanted to like this work but the art style and the story didn't really click with me. And I finished off that month with reading A Chronicle of a Death Foretold by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I'm still waiting for the right time for me to read 100 Years of Solitude by the same author but in the meantime I've been reading some of his shorter works so this was one of them. In April, I read three more graphic novels. They were Diary of a Reluctant Dreamer by Alberto Ledesma, Fun Home, a tragic comic by Alison Bechdel, and Night Fisher by R. Kikuo Johnson. None of these really made an impact on me, which is a shame because I think April wasn't the greatest reading month for me. I also read Snow Country by Kawabata Yasunari, which was honestly pretty disappointing for me. I really expected to like this book because I heard it had really beautiful writing. I don't think much happens in Snow Country, so I think I was just a little bit bored with it. And I finished off the month by reading The Selected Poems of Langston Hughes. I'm not a poetry person, but I'm trying to be, and this was my first foray into reading a whole poetry collection. I think the poems in this collection were just okay for me, but I didn't mind reading it at all. May was a very light reading month for me because of finals, but I did read a very beautifully drawn graphic novel, which is Beautiful Darkness by Fabian Bellman and Kara Skouet. I really want to get a physical copy of this because it is so beautifully drawn and one of the few French comic works that I've read. Also that month, I read a short story, Micromegas by Voltaire, which was a quick fun read. June was 
amazing for me because I finished reading East of Eden by John Steinbeck. This is the best book I read in 2021. Um, maybe the best book I've ever read ever. If you want to read John Steinbeck, I actually recommend you read a few of his other works before you get to this one because I think this is really something that you should cherish. For comics, I read the graphic novel The Magic Fish by Chung Lee Nguyen. This was a cute story and had some very pretty illustrations. I read volumes 1 through 7 of 20th Century Boys by Naoki Urasawa. This is now my favorite manga series like of all time. I still have plenty of volumes to go before I finish this work, but I decided I would wait and start collecting the physical volumes to read instead of reading it online just because I want the full experience. In July, I read Convenient Store Woman by Sayaka Murata. This one had a very interesting narrator. Evidence by Mary Oliver. This was another try at reading a poetry collection. This one was not quite my taste. The Ghost Map, the story of London's most terrifying epidemic by Stephen Johnson. I read this for my public health microbiology class I took over the summer. Honestly, it's a really good read. It's about the cholera outbreak in Victorian London and talks about Jon Snow, the founder of epidemiology. So if you're interested in this nonfiction read, I highly recommend it. I only read one book in August and that was The Tale of Genji by Murasaki Shikibu. I came across this abridged version in a used bookstore and reading the intro got me immediately hooked onto it. The Tale of Genji is a classic Japanese novel written in the 11th century by a noblewoman of the time and is possibly the world's first novel ever written. I low-key hate Genji, the titular character, but despite that I really love the setting and the world and the other characters that Lady Murasaki wrote about. And I hope one day to read the full unabridged version, but the English translation is over 1300 pages, so that will have to wait for now. For September, I read two books. One was a poetry collection by Ocean Vung, which is called Night Sky with Exit Wounds. And I finally found a poetry collection that I enjoyed this year. It did take a little bit of effort to get into it, just because I don't really read poetry but I read Ocean Vung's debut novel On Earth We're Briefly Gorgeous last year and I really loved his writing style. It's so beautiful and poetic, um, so I had to read his poetry collection. I also reread a separate piece by John Knowles which did not hold up to when I first read it as a 13 year old. I think just the story was kind of plain for me and the narrator was annoying me by the end of it. But I've always meant to reread it, so I don't mind that I didn't like it that much. I did not complete any books in October, and this is because I was finishing this very thick book, The Hummingbird's Daughter by Luis Alberto Urea. I finished this up in November, so this was what I read for those two months. I realized I have a thing for long books that take you on a journey and explore family and relationships while also deeply exploring the world that the characters live in. And that's exactly what I loved about this book. I picked this up for $2 at Goodwill and I did not expect to love this as much as I did. It is a historical novel about Teresita Uria who eventually becomes the saint of Kabora. There's a lot of humor in this book. It's a wild adventure. I love the characters. This is a really enjoyable book and if you want to read something that's not a classic or a comic, um, which is what I've recommended so far, then you should definitely read this. As a college student, December is another month that gets overtaken by finals, um, so I think I had a light reading month for the end of the year. I read volumes 1 through 8 of Sunny by Tayo Matsumoto, which is a slice of life about a lively foster home slash group home slash orphanage in a small town in Japan. I really enjoyed the art style in this one, and if you're looking for a manga with a more unique art style, I recommend this one. For novels, I read The Adventures of Al in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. This was not on my to read list at all but it was for sale at Barnes & Nobles for like three dollars so I had to get it and it's a very nonsensical read but it is a fun one. Next I read My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Atosa Moshbeg and this is probably the most different from what I usually read and is also different from what I expected going into it just from a few reviews I read. I'm not the fastest reader but I did get through this in about a day, half of which I think is because the writing style is so simple and half of it was because I 
hated this narrator like with a passion. I don't have much experience with unlikable characters as the narrator but I did not enjoy this one. I will say the ending wasn't bad. Um, I'm just glad I didn't spend more than a day getting through it. And for my last reads of the year, I read volume 32 through 35 of Hunter x Hunter by Yoshihiro Togashi. I had finished watching the anime a while ago and I wanted to pick up the manga where the anime left off, so this is where I'm at and it's going pretty good so far. And that was everything I read in 2021. Before I let you go, I do want to talk about a few of the books that I'm reading right now that I'll finish next month, so in 2022. First is The Divine Comedy by Dante, which is a very massive book, but I got it on sale for like $8 at Barnes and & Nobles, and I've been meaning to read this for a while, so I had to pick it up. I have a few other epic poems on my bookshelf, I think. The Odyssey and Paradise Lost, which I've tried to read, but I get so confused and lost within the first few pages because I'm not used to reading that kind of stuff. But with Divine Comedy, after a few cantos, I think I got the hang of the language and now I'm starting to really enjoy it. My other current read that I picked up from the library is The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. I just got through the first short story in this collection and it did scare me a little, which is kind of fun because I never read horror or anything of that genre, so this dark retelling of fairy tales is the closest I've gotten and it's going pretty good so far. I have a few books that I've already bought and plan to read next year and those are Tortilla Flat by John Steinbeck, Cannery Row by John Steinbeck, um, I got this pretty edition, and Their Eyes Were Watching God by Zora Neale Hurston. I think I'm most excited for this one but of course as a Steinbeck fan I'm excited for these two as well. I started a little bit of Tortilla Flat, but I'm going to leave it on hold so I can finish the other two books I'm currently reading. And with that, we are done with this recap of my reading year. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the book content as much as I enjoyed making it. I wish you guys a happy new year and I'll see you in 2022.